that people who are from or live in the UK, when they hear people say they like the British accent, our initial reaction is, okay, but which one? Because a British English accent can sound like this. You know, go on, go and make us a cup of tea. Uh, and I was half fuming, thinking, no, hold on, I ain't making a cup of tea, I ain't got my present here. Or this. I don't know why you're doing it, but stop. Or even this. You can have a chicken in the breakfast if you ask for chicken in the breakfast. Breakfast, is it? Breakfast. <laughs> They're crazy different, even if you don't notice so much now. So in this lesson, you'll learn some interesting facts about the most difficult British accents and will challenge your listening comprehension of these accents. So get ready. If you're new here and frustrated with boring methods of learning English that just don't seem to work, you've come to the right place. Each week we create lessons like this to help learners like you get comfortable using English naturally and with confidence anywhere and anytime. If you'd like to be part of our global community, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell down below so that you never miss out on any of our new lessons. So today I'm going to talk about six interesting and difficult to understand accents, especially if the speaker has a strong accent. But before I reveal what those six accents are, I'm going to talk about RP, which stands for Received Pronunciation. This accent is said to be sort of the standard British accent. This is the accent that you might be more used to hearing or perhaps being taught at school. But it's good to note that even though this may be the accent that people think of as the standard British accent, only about 2% of the population actually speak this way. So that's why it's so important to learn all the other accents as well for your comprehension and for your listening. Received pronunciation is the Queen's English. It sounds like this. Christmas can be hard for those who have lost loved ones. This year especially, I understand why. This more classic RP accent sounds posh and words are articulated pretty clearly. But there's also a more modern version of it called modern RP, which is like the accent Emma Watson has. English guys are like very well put together and they dress really well and they're like very well mannered. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but they're also very restrained. such a family person. I love spending time with them. I love being with them. So, you know, sometimes I go back to Birmingham and especially uh, at this time of the year, you know, Christmas just reminds me so much of, you know, family. Could you understand that Birmingham or as we like to shorten it, Brummy accent? Let's give it another listen, this time with subtitles. I'm such a family person. I love spending time with them. I love being with them. So, you know, sometimes I go back to Birmingham and especially uh, at this time of the year, you know, Christmas just reminds me so much of, you know, family. He shortens the word them to just um, especially because the word that precedes them is with. So normally in connected speech, one of these sounds is not pronounced, but actually he pronounces the TH in with as v, which is typical in quite a few British accents. The thing that's tricky about the Birmingham accent is the vowels. For example, the word bus, you might expect in Britain for people to say, but us, they say bus, or they'll say us as us. Same thing with pub, pub. Notice also how he says love as love. This sound is synonymous with northern accent, so the further north you go, the more common it is. Usually also the word of gets reduced a lot, so you actually only hear an uh sound. For example, in the phrase a lot of money, you would hear a lot of money. In general, this accent is quite soft and elastic and it just has its completely own different sound. If all of a sudden you popped up in Birmingham, would you be able to understand the locals from there? Let's put your listening comprehension to the test. What does he say here? It was, it was a BMX I'd, I'd asked for, I was desperate for one. It was, it was an orange BMX. It was, it was a BMX I'd, I'd asked for, I was desperate for one. It was, it was an orange BMX. 
Could you understand what he said? Leave a comment down below and let us know what you think he says. We'll be checking. It was, it was a BMX that I'd asked for. I was desperate for one. It was, it was an orange BMX. Another word that you might notice being said differently if you compare it with a modern RP accent is the word right. You might expect someone from the UK to say right. However, in Birmingham, they say Roy. It's a completely different sound. Right, boys, get on here. Today, this is my fucking wedding day. Yeah. So many learners feel the same way you do. You have plenty of ways to listen to English, to read it even. But in your day-to-day -day life, you have few, if any, real opportunities to use what you're learning by speaking. So we decided to solve this problem by creating our real life app. This is the only place where anytime, anywhere, you can just press a button and start practicing your English instantly with other English speakers from all around the world. You can have fascinating conversations about your life, your passions, different cultures, or even just about the weather if you want. And that's not all. You can listen to the full interviews of all the experts you're watching on the Beyond Borders with Ethan talk show with a full interactive transcript and vocabulary definitions. Having a great teacher can be life-changing, but I know so many of you just can't afford that, and so you have to learn on your own. We made the Real Life app a free resource that you can use to improve your speaking. So download it now for free by clicking up here or the description down below. Or you can just look up Real Life English in your favorite app store. Our next tricky British accent is... Glaswegian. It's good to come back to Glasgow because you can speak. You know, when you travel with a Scottish accent, it's kind of hard. Nobody understands anything you're saying. You know, I've done a few, I've done a few TV shows. I'm a pretty fucking big deal. You know? <laughs> Glaswegian is the accent from Glasgow, the capital of Scotland. Now, Scotland has many different accents and even their own language, Scottish Gaelic. It's also worth mentioning that although Scotland is part of Britain, we would rather call their accent Scottish as it is a country in their own right, and so we wouldn't really call it a British accent. Banachtina Fela Padrig are clan war gone to Mangale, so Walia agus ar fut na crinia, er ar la nashanta kellir hain. There's not just one Scottish accent, but I think one of the hardest to understand for non-UK residents and even UK residents is the Glaswegian accent from Glasgow. Check out this bit of stand-up comedy by Kevin Bridges. And you've got a Scottish accent on the telly, you need to try and enunciate it and use proper English, but it's hard to find the right balance, because no matter how hard you try to enunciate and use proper English, so did you notice the way he said telly? Telly is a British way of saying television, or rather than saying TV, we could just call it the telly. However, that last sound there, he pronounced it very different to the way I would. He pronounced it as tele, tele. So it has more of an e sound at the end there. So words that end with Y, you'll usually hear that in the Glaswegian accent. Here's another example of this accent from James McAvoy. This might be the first time that you've heard my native accent, because in most of my movies, my accent is either English crumpet or it's American hat dog. But I'm actually very proud to be from Scotland. Did you notice there the way that he said the words proud and Scotland? This is very distinctive of the Glaswegian accent. So rather than say proud with that ow sound, he said proud and he said Scotland, not Scotland. So those vowel sounds are very different. Test yourself with this accent. What does Kevin say here? I'm sitting beside the guy that's pulled on three and a half billion dollars. <laughs> I'm sitting beside the guy that's pulled on three and a half billion dollars. <laughs> Crazy how different our accents are, right? I'm sitting beside the guy that's pulled on three and a half billion dollars. <laughs> My accent isn't exactly RP. It's probably what we would call estuary, which maybe I'll leave for another video to explain. But this is probably why you can understand me a little bit better and maybe struggle a little bit with Kevin. If you want to learn more about this particular accent, then why not listen to Sir Alex Ferguson? You can watch this 
this lesson as well where his accent is featured. Or you could even try watching the TV series Outlander, which is set in the Scottish Highlands. Or you might as well watch the whole stand-up show by Kevin Bridges. I'll leave the link down in the description below. Next up, we have the Geordie accent. This is the term that we use to describe the accent from Newcastle all the way up to the north of England. Americans got on with your Geordie accents. Oh, it's getting better, isn't it's it? It's all right. We have to, yeah. like, slow down when we speak, say mm. with T's and, you know, make sure we don't sound too Geordie. One of the biggest differences between Geordie and RP is that the R's at the end of words aren't pronounced and tend to be pronounced as A ah instead. So a word like sugar becomes sugar and a word like space center becomes space center. How the Americans got on with your Geordie accents? Oh, it's getting better, isn't it? It's all right. It? We have to, yeah. like, slow down when we speak, say mm. with T's and, you know, make sure we don't sound too Geordie. Again, many of the vowel sounds are different. For example, in the way that Jade says slow down. It's also an accent where the glottal T is used the most. Like when you hear her say better, she says better. Notice also how Jade says make sure. You know, make sure we don't sound too Geordie. So it sounds like there's another syllable in there. She doesn't say make sure the way that I do. She says make sure, sure. Also note how she says the word matured here. Again, it seems like there's more syllables because she says matured, matured. But no, we have matured. <laughs> our writing's matured. Our lyrics have definitely matured. Um, can I say mature Stop anymore? It. Not sure, matured. No? Can you make out what she says here? Don't know why you're doing it, but stop. Did you catch it? Along with the other challenge with the Birmingham accent, leave a comment below with what you think she says here with her Geordie accent. Moving on, an accent which, according to many, is the most difficult to understand. The Scouse accent. Hey, look at the talent. Let's give him a pull. Should I? Aye, but don't rush none of your five-bar gate jumps and over sorts of stuff. What's that supposed to mean? I don't know. I thought it just sounded distinguished like George Harrison, the Scouts of Distinction. So this is the accent of Liverpool. We also refer to it as the Liverpudlian accent. However, Scouse is used a lot more. It's easier to say. It's one of the most famous British regional accents thanks to the Beatles. It's a very nasal dialect and can be hard to copy at first. A defining characteristic that makes Scouse very different from something like RP is the K sound in some words. Scouse accent with Maggie. Maggie, how do you say a book? <laughs> book. Book? How can I have a chicken in the breakfast? You can have a chicken in the breakfast if you ask for chicken in your breakfast. Breakfast, is it? Breakfast. That is actually speaking Scouse. Yeah. Oh my god. So this is a very strong accent and you can hear that k sound there is right at the back of the throat. It's more like So you hear words like buch, buch and chicken. Chicken. I'm not very good at doing accents, so excuse me. I'm trying to do it. You can try it too. Have fun with it. But this is very distinctive of the Scouse accent. You won't really hear it in other places in the UK. Now, they'll also say certain sounds quite differently. For example, the T in right, they would say right. So it has like a t and a s kind of sound mixed together. Similarly to the Brummy accent, you'll hear that rather than that uh sound in words like bus, you'll hear bus as well, that u sound. And also notice the r, it's more of a rhotic r, so they do tend to pronounce the r in words, whereas in my accent, for example, and in many other British ones, you won't hear it. John Bishop is a good example of someone with a Scouse accent. Watch this clip without subs and then we'll play it again with subs. 
No, it's been loads of time in America, and, and there was, I was working there in a, in a restaurant in Redondo Beach in LA. I was about 22 or something, and I was a host. As people come in, you go, oh, welcome to Chopsticks, would you like somewhere to sit? No, it's been loads of time in America, and, and there was, I was working there in a, in a restaurant in Redondo Beach in LA. I was about 22 or something, and I was a host. As people come in, you go, oh, welcome to Chopsticks, would you like somewhere to sit? Next up on our list is the Cockney accent. Let's take a listen to Jason Statham with that accent. I mean, the good part about this, it comes from a great uh, line of uh, books written by Donald Westlake. Mm -hmm. So this is a character that's been played before by Lee Marvin and Mel Gibson, so. How did your comprehension of that go? Here is Michael Caine with the accent slightly stronger as well. It was in the days of disco and everything and out getting bummed and staying out till two o'clock in the morning. Let's now take a listen to these two clips again with subtitles. I mean, the good part about this, it comes from a great uh, line of uh, books written by Donald Westlake. Mm -hmm. So this is a character that's been played before by Lee Marvin and Mel Gibson. So it was in the days of disco and everything and out getting bummed and staying out till two o'clock in the morning. This is one of the UK's most famous dialects and it goes hand in hand with London. It came about as the dialect of the London working classes, especially in the east end of the city. With the Cockney accent, there are lots of glottal stops and the TH sound frequently changes to a F sound. Now I know lots of you love the Cockney accent, you're always asking me questions about it, on Instagram especially. So back to those two clips with Jason Statham and Michael Caine. Did you notice how Jason also does not pronounce the H in he? This H is often reduced at the start of words in the Cockney accent. Michael also shows us the glottal stop and the sound the OW makes in OUT as a more open sound. Cockney is one of the accents found in London and it's been widely represented in Hollywood, sometimes terribly. In Cockney, words get linked a lot, so words get joined together forming a long string of sounds that makes it harder to understand. Now moving on to the next accent. Essex accent. It's not too far from the Cockney one to be honest because many people that live in Essex kind of moved from the east end of London a bit further out so it's just outside of London to the east as well. So this county's dialect is really distinct. You can tell immediately if someone comes from Essex. They'll pronounce words like no as na and drop the th sound from words like think so instead they'll say think. Get a glimpse of this accent with English media personality Gemma Collins. Yeah, well she's not a nightmare, she's a very switched on businesswoman and to be honest, you know, when I first come into this we was getting paid £50 a day, I didn't uh -huh. know how long it was going to last. Uh -huh. And I said that whatever comes out of this, I will get every diamond dollar out of this. And when it's all over, I'll be able to sit back and go, yeah, I did all right. You might not have gotten 100% of what she said there. So here she is another time with subs. Yeah, well, she's not a nightmare. She's a very switched on businesswoman. And to be honest, you know, when I first come into this, we was getting paid 50 pound a day. I didn't uh -huh. know how long it was going to last. Uh -huh. And I said that whatever comes out of this, I will get every diamond dollar out of this. And when it's all over, I'll be able to sit back and go, yeah, I did all right. Here you can notice, first of all, that Gemma makes a grammatical error by saying, when I first come into this, instead of came. This is quite usual in the Essex and Cockney accents. The same as when she says 50 pound instead of 50 pounds. You'll also notice the glottal T, especially when she says out of this. Those three words connect to sounds like out of this. Okay, so that brings this lesson to an end. To recap, in this video, we have seen six accents. They are the accent from Birmingham, also known as Bromie. It was, it was a BMX I'd, I'd asked for, I was desperate for one. It was, it was an orange BMX. Then Glaswegian, which is one of the hardest accents to understand from Scotland. But it's hard to find the right balance, because no matter how hard you try to enunciate, then we had the Geordie accent from Newcastle. Don't know why you're doing it, but stop. Scouse from Liverpool. 
I was all 22 or something, and I was a host. As people come in, go, oh, welcome to Chopsticks. Would you like somewhere to sit? Cockney, which is the east end of London. It was in the days of disco and everything and out getting bummed and staying out till 2 o'clock in the morning. And lastly, the Essex accent, which is east of London. You know, when I first come into this, we was getting paid £50 a day. I didn't uh -huh. know how long it was going to last. Uh -huh. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. May I now interest you in another interesting video on accents? This is the one language, three accents lesson I did with Ethan and Ollie. In this funny video where we sat down and compared my particular British English with Ethan's American English and Ollie's Australian English. Don't miss out, check it out now. So I would say this is the weirdest grocery list ever. Tomatoes, potatoes, yogurt, banana, oregano and mayonnaise. <laughs> Did we all say that one differently? I said it really different from you guys. Oregano. Andrea, you say? Oregano. Oregano. But you oregano. guys said 